Tusca Cafe began as a, an, an experiment, a kind of adventure between Val Canaparoli and myself. We looked at each other after the overcoat had come from Canada to ACT and loved it so much. And Val said to me, if you are really interested in this kind of movement theater, we should build one ourselves. One of the building blocks of this piece was fantasy. The imagination that happens between people, between moments, silent things where longing gets consummated or humiliation happens or despair happens or something like that. That was one piece of it. Yes, it's fantasy. So there's moments that are total fantasy within the show, which I find fascinating, where all of a sudden there's a swan or there's, you know, something magical happening. But the fact that it's based in, in a historical kind of site and we're bringing some of those characters to life in, in, in a way that anyone, you know, I learned things about the the cafe just by, by knowing, and I knew Rudolph, and, and so to be able to portray him is really fabulous, and to, to be a part of it, that history is great. Dance as a metaphor uh, was actually very real in this circumstance. It was something that was part of this bar, in part because the bar is a kind of archaeological wonderland where, in a strange way, if you put money in that very old jukebox, you could imagine the dying swan pirouetting out. It's, that's how strange a space it really is. I don't It's been incredibly liberating being here, um, where we aren't obligated in such a tight way to the real history of that bar, because in fact, I, we always felt the next step of the piece was to actually let it tell its own story and be as universal as it could be. Every city has a sort of magical bar that you can walk into and have an experience like you can have at the Tusca Cafe, so we never wanted it to be tied to that space so precisely. Even where I live, there's a little bar around the corner called Whalen's, um, where you get the regular regulars coming in. There's a loud Scottish guy who's boorish and you want to kick him out. There's the football player, there's the lesbians in the corner, you know, there's these guys playing poker, and it's the same group of people. And so it has that feel to me of this community. And the fact that there's a real history that is truthful about Nuriev coming to the bar and Natasha meeting her husband there, and the aspect and the history that just evokes out of this walls and the character and the person who owns it, um, it, it really is extraordinary. When we came here, the big goal was to deepen the storyline of the bartender. And we have a fantastic Canadian actor, Dean Paul Gibson, as our bartender, um, who had worked with Peter Anderson, who's in it before in The Overcoat. So that's a kind of wonderful next step of the journey. Then we have two fantastic new Canadian dancers, Rex Harrington and Cindy Marie Small, who bring their own completely unique um, presence to it. I got an email out of the blue and uh... I uh, just said all these things about this wonderful production and that uh, it didn't needed someone who had dance training, could partner, who was theatrical. And I thought, hmm, who could that be? I'm a closet actor. <laughs> Interesting to be involved with actors rather than dancers because as dancers we usually just do what we're told and find our mark and just get it on the actors. You know, they really delve into how they come in a door, why they sit down. So it's interesting to, to learn from them how to work a scene from a different angle, totally. It's intense seeing the different worlds collide in a sense. And, and I think it's a unique fusion of uh, both aspects of dance and acting. The other new member who's made an enormous impact is an American actress, uh, Annie Purcell, um, around whom we've built a new character. So we, we created a very young person, a kind of vagrant who was inspired by Chaplin's The Kid. I always loved Jackie Coogan and I was always very moved by that relationship between Chaplin and this child. Um, and because she starts so young in the founding of the piece, she could age along with the bar. So we've built a whole new sequence here of that character and that has changed a lot of uh, what has happened between the triangle of the bartender, the musician, and this, this vagrant who grows up. And I think given the piece a kind of emotional core to hang the, the, the surrounding um, bar life and history on. It's changed a lot since uh, they did in San Francisco, so that's why I wanted to be a part of it too, was to be in, in on the ground floor of reworking it and, and being able to put my little bit in there as well. But it's very clear. I mean, now I think it's even clearer with the arc that goes through and how you watch people transfer through the times. Um, and that's what's great too. You get to see from the beginning to the very end of, you know, when there wasn't cell phones, when, you know, it's, it's fascinating.